We're now beginning our study of the animal kingdom. And when we study the animal kingdom, it helps us to learn some things about uh, what makes them um, animals and some of the similarities that all animals have to each other. And we begin this by learning some things about the basic development of animals from single-celled zygotes into multicellular organisms uh, and some things about how their body plans determine how they relate to each other. So we'll first of all talk about the embryo development. All animals uh, that are the result of sexual reproduction between uh, two gametes develop from a diploid embryo. The embryo begins as a zygote, a, a, two cell a one cell stage that's caused by the fu uh, fusion of the gametes. And then the, uh, the zygote will undergo a series of developmental stages that we call the embryology of the organism. Now we're learning about the patterns of development, which can help us understand the evolutionary relationships between the various groups of animals. And we're doing a number of activities in class this week to help illustrate these patterns of development. The first stage, of course, is the fusion of the gametes to produce the zygote. The zygote is a single cell that, that is diploid because it is produced by the uh, fusion of two haploid cells. And uh, once you have a zygote, then you, in order to become multicellular, which all animals are, you have to increase the number of cells, and this occurs by mitosis. Um, at this point in time, you have basically a, a solid ball of cells. This is called the morula, and it continues to be a solid ball of cells, cells from 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64 cells, at least maybe a little bit farther. But when you get to that point, it becomes difficult for all of the cells in the ball of cells to have an exposed surface to the outside of the ball. Some of them are going to be stuck in the inside. Those that are stuck on the inside will have difficulty meeting their nutritional and metabolic needs. Uh, they won't be able to get nutrients. They won't be able to get rid of waste, similar to what we saw in individual cells when they were needed to divide. And so what happens at this point is that those interior mass cells begin to migrate toward the outside, and you end, end up with the formation of a blastula or hollow ball stage. Uh, the cells will continue dividing uh, and the increase in the size of this blastula until a certain point when the um, blastula begins to enfold into itself to begin to form a multi-layered embryo. And this is followed by the development of the digestive tract and multiple cell layers, which are called germ layers. And we'll discuss each one of these in turn. Um, so here we see uh, in pictures what happens. We start with the zygote here undergoing cleavage or cell division to produce eight cells. Then this is the morula and then the hollow ball blastula, which is uh, has um, cells on the outside and an empty cavity in the middle called a blastocele. And then the, blast the blastula over time will begin the process of gastrulation, which is pushing in or the infolding of, of the outer layer to the inside to end up with multiple cell layers. And this will begin, this will, the opening here is called the blastopore. We still have the blastoseal that's seen here. And what we end up with as this pushes in more and more is the development of two different tissue layers, the endoderm and the ectoderm. And we'll eventually see the development of a third germ layer in between the endoderm and ectoderm. Um, the mesoderm forms in a couple of different ways, depending on, the, depending on what kind of embryo you're talking about. Um, but you'll end up with another layer of, cell, of cells here. In this cavity, which is now called the archenteron, when you have three cell layers, will eventually develop into a digestive tract that will have openings at both ends. Um, depending on what tissues develop from point, or what um, happens to the, to the, um, the archenteron will determine, um, for, and, and the blastopore determines what group of animals it is. Uh, there are two main groups of animals called protostomes and deuterostomes. The protostomes, in the protostomes, the animal's mouth is formed from the blastopore, the, uh, the original opening of the gastrula. And the anus forms from a different opening as this pushes on through and makes a tube within a tube. And there are several phy phyla of animals that fall into this category. The platyhelminthes, flatworms, nematoda, roundworms, mollusca, annelida, and arthropods. And we'll talk about each one of these in turn. The deuterostomes, in the deuterostomes, the animal's anus forms from the blastopore, and the mouth is formed from a different opening. 
and there are two phyla which are in the deuterostomes, and this is the echinoderms and the chordates. And we'll, again, we'll discuss each of these groups in turn. Now, uh, most animals have tissues, which remember are collections of specialized cells with a common structure or function, or both. And uh, all of these various tissues originate back to the layers of tissues within the embryo after gastrulation occurs. There are three germ layers that, can, that will form the endoderm, the innermost layer, the ectoderm, outermost layer, and the mesoderm or middle layer. And each one develops into specific tissues in the adult animal. Um, the germ layers, remember, are the undifferentiated cells, more or less, at that time, and they will, over time, be developed uh, or take on specific functions as this development progresses. In the pictures that are shown here, the ectoderm is shown in red. This is the outermost layer, uh, and it will begin become the sense organs, the nerves, and the skin, or um, coverings of the organism. The endoderm tissue, shown here in yellow, is the innermost layer. This is the lining of the digestive tract and the respiratory system. And then the mesoderm, or blue layer, is the middle layer, and that will become the muscles and much of the rest of the organ systems that are found in the animal. So uh, here's a list of, of these different tissues. Over time, as the organisms develop, some organisms, develop, most organisms develop a body cavity that is lined with, with, with tissue. And um, the particular kind of t cavity is called a coelom. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And it will be lined with a layer of cells um, called the peritoneum. And so you hear, see here the ectoderm and what it develops into, the endoderm and what it develops into, the mesoderm, um, and then the peritoneum, which is a layer of cells from the mesoderm that lines the body wall. So we have a number of different ways that animals can develop. Some animals don't develop into these body systems at all. They're pretty undifferentiated. Then we have those that have, that have uh, two germ layers, and then we have those that have three germ layers. In three germ layers, there are various stages of body cavity development. The first category in these, in these triple layer, three layer animals are called acelomates. A means not, and these are animals that lack or do not have a body cavity. There's one phylum of animals that fits into this, and that's phylum platyhelminthes, which is the flat ones. They have organ systems, and they're very specialized to do certain things, but they do not have a tissue-lined a tissue, uh, fluid-filled body cavity. Second, we have the pseudocelomates. Pseudo means false, and these have a developing body cavity that is not entirely covered with mesoderm. There's one phylum that fits into this category, and that's phylum nematoda, the round worms. They do have a complete digestive system, which we'll talk about next week, um, but their body cavity, as you can see here, um, the endoderm is lined with mesoderm, but the, uh, I'm sorry, the, ecto, the ectoderm is lined with mesoderm, but the endoderm is not covered with mesoderm. And finally, we have the coelomates. Coelomates have a true fluid-filled body cavity that is completely lined and covered with mesoderm, or developed entirely from the mesoderm tissue, and it's lined with a tissue called peritoneum. Uh, the first phylum of animals in which we see this is phylum annelida, the segmented worms, and all other animal phyla after that point, which includes the arthropods and the mollusks and the echinoderms and the chordates, which we belong to. Now, um, a, a, another thing that, that is a factor of most body plans is that is symmetry. This is the arrangement of body parts around an axis or a series of axes. And there are three main patterns of symmetry in animals. First of all, we have asymmetrical animals, which do not have any body symmetry. Radial symmetry, where you have the arrangement of body parts around a central axis, kind of like the spokes in a bicycle wheel. And the third pattern is bilateral symmetry, which is the arrangement of body parts with mirror image right and left sides, like we have. That's the most common most common uh, form of symmetry in animals. Um, asymmetrical animals include phylum periphera, which is the sponges, and that's the only group of animals that are considered asymmetrical. Uh, bilateral symmetry, symmetrical, the second pattern of symmetry. Most invertebrate animals have some sort of body symmetry other than the sponges. The second form of symmetry is radial symmetry. 
there are two uh, phyla which have radial symmetry. These are phylum nidaria, which is the jellyfish and corals and anemones, and phylum econodermata, which includes the starfish and sand dollars. And you can see here that the body parts uh, are arranged um, from a central axis there, uh, and they radiate out to the center like you would think about the spokes of a bicycle wheel. And then the third form of sy symmetry is bilateral symmetry, where you have body parts divided into two equal halves that are mirror images of each other. And th this is really important because it allowed the development of the central nervous system with brain development. This is called cephalization, or the development of a head region, which is very important in the development of, this, or of an animal group into a more advanced animal group. And we'll discuss more about the um, anatomical directions that are shown here in this picture as we go on with our activities this week and into next week when we talk about the different groups of animals. That's all for this particular set of notes about um, introduction to the animal kingdom.